Did you recently get a notification from your dream school that you have been deferred? If so, in this video, I'm gonna give you guys some pointers for how to deal with a deferral situation and potentially get into that school of your dreams. Before we get started, I want to remind everybody to head to supertutortv.com and check out the best SAT prep course ever and the best ACT prep course ever. We have over 100 hours in each course of video-based prep. So it's like having private tutoring with me, but without all the private tutoring costs. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already, and you can subscribe to our mailing list at supertutortv.com slash subscribe. It's totally free. We'll keep you posted if we have any deals, any sales, if we have anything exciting going on here, as well as keep you in the loop with our recent videos and everything we've got on the table. So let's get into this. I'm gonna give you guys six tips for how to deal with deferrals. If you don't know who I am, I'm a private tutor. I went to Stanford myself, but I tutor students in SAT and ACT prep, and I also do college admissions consulting and essay coaching. So I have experience working with students who've been deferred in the past. I've helped some of those students actually get off those deferrals and into their dream schools, into top 20 schools, even top 10. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that these students did in order to get themselves from deferred to accepted. If you don't have a lot of time, I will tell you number five is probably my favorite tip. But this is kind of chronological, and if you want the whole shebang, we're going to start off with number one, which is get feedback on your application. Knowledge is power, as they say, and one piece of knowledge that you really need to figure out at this point is why were you rejected, or rather deferred, meaning why are you almost there but not quite there yet? One way to do this is to go for outside help and get somebody else's opinion. It could be a tutor, it could be a guidance counselor, but it could also be yourself. You could go through all of your essays, all of your material, analyze, did I make mistakes? Did I have a bunch of typos? Like what's going on? And that's gonna help you with further steps down the line. Not only is it gonna help you in trying to stop this deferral from turning into a rejection, but it's also going to potentially help you as you move toward completing your other applications, which you also don't want to be rejected, right? Ah. Sometimes the answer is simply not that you're not qualified. You may be totally, absolutely qualified, but that you're another one of the same of something that they've already filled their class with. So some of this is just the way life is, and it's sad, but it's true. And that's the fact that sometimes a school's trying to build a nice, diverse freshman class, and they've already got somebody who plays the trumpet and wants to be a computer scientist, and they need somebody who wants to be a philosopher and plays the cello. And it's nothing personal. It's just the fact that colleges don't want to accept a bunch of people who all look the same. But many other times, you can look through your application and you can find some weaknesses in it. It could be as simple as you're very standard strong, as they like to say. You've got lots of good things going for you, but you don't have any wow factor. It could be that you've got great grades, great test scores, great essays, but your activities are kind of meh. It could be that you have an essay in particular that just wasn't very well written, or maybe all of your essays weren't very well written. In any case, figure out what your weaknesses are and make sure that as you approach the school and communicate with them, that you address those weaknesses to the best of your ability. Okay, number two, be realistic about your chances. The next thing that I recommend most people do if you're deferred is to figure out what are the stats and what are the chances that the different schools have been deferred to. For example, Stanford doesn't defer that many students. So if you've been deferred at Stanford, that's a good thing. That means you probably have a better chance of getting in than when you first applied. Now, if you get deferred from a school like MIT, it's actually the opposite. MIT accepts, I think, around 4% of students who are deferred, so that's a lower admission rate than their general admission rate. Depending on the school, it could mean that your deferral is closer to a rejection or closer to an acceptance. So you can do that research and just kind of know what you're dealing with. The reason that I want you to look that up is I want you to know where you should spend your time. Should you be spending your time trying to eke your way into this dream school or should you be spending your time working on another application to a different school? Because you might still have a little bit of time before regular decision deadlines to get into another school that is equally awesome. Cool? Cool. Number three, talk to your guidance counselor. Guidance counselors can be a great resource. Not only can they help you with step number one and give you some feedback on why maybe you got rejected, but they also sometimes can actually get on the phone with the people in the admissions office and ask. Some guidance counselors have relationships with actual schools that you've applied to. Now, depending on what kind of school you go to and what kind of school you apply to, that relationship can vary. Not all guidance counselors are going to do this for you, by the way. And if you go to a large public school that has an overworked guidance counselor, chances are she is probably not gonna help you that much. But you can always ask, and asking never hurts. And sometimes, if they can get that kind of feedback, you can use that information to help you craft a better message to this university as you plead your way 
for admission. Number four, try to interview if you haven't already. So sometimes early applicants are kind of left in the dark when it comes to interviewing because a lot of the interviewing cycles might get filled up really quickly when it comes to early applications. Or if you turn in your early application right up against the deadline, you might not get an interview. But even though you might not have gotten an interview for early, now that you're in the deferral pile, you may be able to get an interview with a regular round of decisions. And if that's the case, reaching out to that school, you know, saying, hey, hey, I'd really love to do an interview. You're still my top choice school. Is there any way I can interview? Can sometimes be a great move, not only to show continued interest, but also to get your voice out there, to have another opportunity to sit down and talk to someone, to share how awesome you are with somebody else, right? So you can do that by contacting the admissions office for wherever you've applied. You can also, if you do have a well-connected guidance counselor and that guidance counselor can get you in for an interview, that sometimes can be really clutch too. Number five. This is my most important step here. And that is send an update email or fill in the appropriate form given by universities at this stage to show your continued interest. If a university sends you an email and says, hey guys, you've been deferred, but you can click here to give us an update at some point before this date in February. If you don't fill in that form, it is very unlikely that you will get in. You need to fill in the form or send the email or send the little box, fill out the little box if they give you one to fill out. Now, unless the university has sent you a letter and specifically said, please do not contact us, please do not send us any messages, and please do not send us any updates, then I like to tell students to send at least two, probably only two, emails or correspondences with that school and with its admissions office. Here's what I think those two should be. One, one is probably asking for an interview and just a really quick, I'm really excited, I really still wanna go here, right? Just get your name in their heads and stuff like that and ask for an interview if you can get one. And the second would be an update email in which you basically make one last plea to try to get in. And what's included in that update email, I'm now gonna kind of go through a little bit and it will, vary depending on what you came up with in step number one. First, I want you to spin whatever weaknesses that you saw in step number one. Anytime you see a weakness, again, addressing it is possibly your ticket out. That means if you had a bunch of Bs, right, in history, but you wanna be a mathematician and you don't really like history or you didn't think you liked history, but now you like history, then maybe the story that you need to tell is how this year when you took blah, blah, blah history class, you suddenly got an A and you're really loving history. And what you didn't recognize is that history is sort of this foundation for critical thinking. And you just thought it was memorizing facts and memorizing things, but you started to understand that history is more about the ideas behind it as opposed to just memorizing things. Maybe that's part of your story. So you talk your way out of and you spin your case for why you're still super awesome even if your application has a few weaknesses. Another weakness students have is honestly, their essays are not that good. And maybe their essays had typos in them or maybe their essays were like just atrocious. Now, if your essays are just good, but not great, no need to completely rewrite them and like totally revise them. Better to just write a good statement. But if you know your essays like didn't even represent you at all and you just totally flubbed them and you didn't even think that it mattered and now you're realizing, oh my goodness, I didn't take this process seriously enough. And maybe the same week that you were writing your essays, like your mom went into the hospital because she got diagnosed with stage four cancer. If something like that happened, then that's something you need to tell colleges, right? If you have a story, if you have an excuse, if you have something that went on, that's fine. Tell your excuse, give your excuse, and then like explain how that really wore on you and how you just like threw these together really fast or just admit your weakness and then submit a brand new set of essays for regular decision and say, I didn't take this seriously enough. And like, I want you to know that this is my top college and I was really busy. And I understand that everyone's really busy and I should have done more and I should have tried harder and I should have started earlier and I didn't, I'm sorry. But here's a brand new set of essays, get it in by the regular decision deadline. By the way, if you're gonna do that, I've seen a, re a revision of a decision with that process at a school. I have seen someone completely change a school's mind from rejection to acceptance. Granted, it's a school that has a history of sometimes doing that, not a lot, but you know, and it wasn't Harvard, but it was a top 30 school. If you really screwed up 
you know, and you want a second chance, say, hey, I hope you consider me for a regular decision and I've redone all my essays and I've updated them in the portal and here's a copy attached to this email. I hope you read it. And maybe they will and maybe they won't. So if you're not going to do that, if you're not like completely revising whatever, if you're not pointing out some egregious error that you made when you wrote your essays, but assuming those things aside, assuming you had a decent application and you just were close but not close enough, let's talk about what you put in your update email. The biggest key to usually getting in off of a deferral list is new information. In particular, awards, honors, things that make you seem the best in the world at something, those are gonna be your biggest fodder for top 10 schools. But for any schools, improvements, or even solid academic performance, new test scores, right? Let's say you retook the ACT or the SAT, or maybe you have a couple subject tests. Those can also be useful. In general, I like to say you wanna get these emails in promptly so that you seem very eager, but at the same time, you wanna balance that with having enough information to have something to say. So if you're waiting on your first quarter grades, I would say that's okay. You can send two emails. In any case, there's no one right date for everyone to submit this. If they give a deadline, make sure it's before that deadline. As a general rule of thumb, I like to have at least one email in before regular decision deadlines, but you're gonna to have to figure that out. Can you pack as much punch as possible and get it in fast? How do you wanna do that? So let's go over, I have like a little template here for like the kind of things that you can put in this letter because I know some of you are like, what do I write? How do I start, right? This is a template by the way. And remember, I have thousands of people watching these videos. So thousands of people are getting this advice and thousands of people might be using the same template. So proceed with caution. Still, it's an overview of kind of the goals that each paragraph that you write can achieve and how you might frame your plea for admission. So here we start at the top, dear, name of admissions person if you know it. So now some of you might know an individual admissions person who introduced themselves to you at a college fair and said, oh, I'm gonna be the one reading your application. If you know that person, awesome. Email that person specifically. If you don't know that person, you can just send this to the general admissions office. I recently received notice that my undergraduate application to blank, name of school, has been deferred. I want to reassert my desire to attend blank, name of school, and share not only a few updates, but also some thoughts that I did not express in my original application. Clever, right? So this first part is your new evidence. And the second part is your spin. First, I am glad to report that I received blah, blah, blah. And then you're gonna share all your grades, all your updates, all your awards. Brag, 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 okay? Second, I realize my application clearly asserted blank. Although that is true, I am also enthusiastic about blank. So this is what I call when you have unbalanced elements in your application. So if your application seemed like a one trick pony and you didn't have any diversity in your essays and all you talked about was one thing, you wanna seem more interesting, more diverse, you wanna have more going on within you. So this is a paragraph that can help you do that if you seem like one note, one note, one note, and you wanna be more expansive. And then you can also talk about how that school meets these other interests in some way, right? Another paragraph. Similarly, the name of a university's emphasis on, and what I like to say is drink the Kool-Aid here. One of the things that colleges want you to do is they want you to drink their Kool-Aid. And what I mean by that is they want you to embrace the ideals and the vibe and everything else that that school has going on, right? I've talked to you guys about this in my other videos too but you wanna make sure that you've asserted that their value system appeals to you. And if you hadn't asserted that in number one, then you can put that here. And then you can maybe tell a story from your past that shows this new area of interest or a clear sense of personal direction or a, a school value you didn't mention in your application that resonates with you, that makes you a more interesting fit for this school. Then we have and or I also look forward to, you can write a paragraph about nerding out about your intellectual ideas or something that makes you think. You can go deep. You can talk about some sort of really interesting idea. You can prove that you have the intellectual chops to hang in this environment, or you could be funny, you could do all sorts of things, right? But these are just some paragraph ideas of the kinds of ideas that you can assert. But what you really wanna do here is stand out, right? You wanna have something to say, you wanna seem like you're the perfect fit for this university, and you wanna really convey that in some way, and hopefully with story. Remember, story is your best tool. Your story, what happened to you in your life, is the most compelling, most emotionally charged material that you have to work with. So don't deny the power of that, okay? And then finally, you have some sort of closing where you see, I see this university as a home where I can grow, enrich, immerse myself, blah, 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 as an individual, but also where I can contribute. This is all fluffy template, by the way. So you want to be more original than this. If you just put this, you will probably not stand out, right? So you need to find your own take on this, but this is the general action that you're trying to achieve in this paragraph. Thank you for your time and consideration. Sincerely, my name, your name, not my name. And that's it. And then you send it off. And then you move on to step six, which is move on. You have the opportunity to apply to more places, probably still, depending on when you're watching this video. And if you have that opportunity because you've been deferred before regular decision deadlines, 
a lot of your energy probably should be spent on your regular decision applications. What lessons can you learn from step number one, right? What were the deficiencies in your application? Can you address those a little bit better in your next applications? Remember, there are also a handful of schools that have early decision two. If that's something of interest to you, that's another way you can gain an edge in the second round. It's not over. There's a few schools like that. Finally, remember that college, where you go to college does not define you. You define you. There are plenty of people who never got into top colleges and have accomplished amazing and great things with their lives. So stay in the game. You're going to go somewhere and there is a path for everyone. And it might just be a matter of figuring out what that path is for you. But don't give up. The most important thing, guys, is that you go to college and you finish college. If you do those two things, you are on a path to making a bright future a reality. So stay with it. Keep going. You've got this. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.